So I'm assuming that you're just getting started on DaVinci and want to learn how to use the basic parts of the program so you can start editing a video and have it exported by the end of the day. So without further ado, let's get right into it so I can show you guys the basics. So when you start off the program, you're going to see your project library here. This is where you can start any project. Simply just right click anywhere in this blank space and create a new project. Call this whatever you want. I'm going to call this basics and we're going to do create. Okay. So now that you're in here, we're going to go over the pages. These two media and cut page you don't need. You're going to be spending mostly all your time on the edit page the coloring page and the delivery to export. So coming back here to the edit page media, this is where you're going to be able to dump all your video clips, your audio sound effects, whatever it is that you need to be able to make the video effects. That's self explanatory. This is where you got all your effects. Then if we come over here on this other side, you're going to see mixer. Once you're playing your video, you're going to be able to see the levels here. Uh, for the audio and inspector this is where you're going to be able to click on a video and start adjusting the zoom the transform the rotation of the video whatever it is that you need now before dumping footage you can always go right here to your project settings and be able to edit the format of the video maybe you might want it upright so it would be 1080 by 1920 and you can always set right here the frames per second. Usually this is the industry standard 23.976. So we'll pick that and save change frame rate. And now we'll dump our footage right here. We already set the frame rate to 23. So don't change. All right. Now for organization purposes, I only have these two files here, but I'm assuming that you're going to have a lot more files than just these two. So to stay organized, what you want to do is right click and create bins. So I always create one for video, audio, and any other stuff that you need, like sound effects or pictures. It's always good to stay organized because it's going to save you the most amount of time in the long run. I see so many people when they edit, they come over here to the media pool and they literally have like 500 things and things from past projects. It's just a mess and it takes forever to find things. Um, so now once that you're organized, you can just drag and drop onto the timeline. I'm going to go to audio. So like this, now that you have everything here, we're going to highlight it all right click wherever you want on one of the clips and go to auto align clips. You're going to use based on waveform and that's going to automatically sync our audio. Okay. So now that we have this aligned, I'm going to show you guys some of the tools that you have. Um, so, so now we're going to go into the tools. I'm going to mention that I have all my shortcuts set up to what I like personally. So whatever I have here isn't necessarily what you're going to have. So if you guys want a video on my shortcuts, let's get this video to a thousand likes. Let's make that the goal. And as soon as we get to a thousand likes on this video, I'll drop my shortcuts video. Simply you got your blade tool right here. You're able to make cuts. And then if you go back to the pointer tool or the selection tool, which would be V, for the shortcut, you can just delete everything on the side. And besides that, Q and W, which is ripple delete to the left and ripple delete to the right. So um, if I press Q here, it's going to delete everything from this cursor to the left, pressing Q. And if I press W, it's going to delete everything from the cursor to the right. You also have J and L. I have mine set up as E and R here but you can fast forward if you press L twice. Everything sounds good, but this sounds way too good to be true. This is gonna be a very common question. It's too good to be true. Are you okay, and then you can also go backwards if you press J. And you can go double speed backwards as well. So that basically sums up all the tools that you need. 
Now what we're gonna do is add some text here. So go to effects, and then you're gonna be able to find this in titles and text plus right here. You can drop some text, expand it a little bit. If you click on it, you're gonna see if you have inspector opened up here, you're gonna be able to make all the adjustments. So you're gonna be able to adjust what it says, the font, I'll use bangers. And then you can also adjust the color and the tracking and everything else, whatever you guys need. The rest is down here. Um, if you want to add an effect, for example, on the text here, what you can do is go to open effects, drop shadow, look that up, drop shadow, and drag and drop it on the text. And you're gonna see it added a little drop shadow here. I'll toggle on and off right now. If you want to adjust the drop shadow, you just go to effects. If you noticed before, this was disabled, but as we drag and drop it onto the text, it makes it, it enables it here. All right here, you can adjust the strength, the distance, whatever you want to that drop shadow. You can make adjustments here. If you want to add a transition to the text, you can go to video transitions, make sure that the search box right here is clear because then it's not gonna show you everything. And you can add any of these transitions. I actually have custom transitions that I created where you can find in the description below. Um, but for example, you can do something like this, like that. Things sounds good, things sounds good. Okay, so you can add transitions to video, text, whatever it is that you want. So that's what it looks like. Now, if you wanted to add some music or sound effects, you would just have to have your own library of sound effects where you can download off of websites. I have a bunch right here. Uh, to keep it organized, I would just go to my media pool, have it selected to audio and whatever it is that I need. Right here, air traffic, I'll drop it here, and then bring it down, drag it down into the timeline. Okay, that's how you'd be able to put music and sound effects into the video. That basically does it for the edit page. What we're gonna do now is go to the coloring page. So very quickly here, all you need is the LUTs. If you want to use any lookup tables that they provide here. You can go here and clips. This will be able to show you all the clips that you have on your timeline out here. So for example, I only have this one clip, but say if I were to divide this into three, now it shows me the three clips right here. And whatever I do to this clip, I can just copy and paste it onto all the other ones here. Um, nodes, this is where you're gonna be doing all your effects. Usually I open up four nodes when I edit, but for you to make it very simple, I would just open up two for the example that I'm gonna give you guys here. Um, effects, this is where you can add anything onto this video. You can take this most mosaic mosaic blur drag and drop and you'll see that it adds that effect and you can just make the adjustments off of here as well so that does it for the tabs on top now for the tabs here all you really need is the color wheel if you guys want to get rid of any noise in your video curves a lot of you may be familiar with how to use this and besides that that's all you really need but for the basics, this will do it. For this video, what I'm gonna do, since I filmed this in Canon Log, I have a specific LUT for that. So I'm just gonna double click with this node selected. It's applied it when it has the symbol here. Now I'm gonna go to the node prior to this to start making adjustments. So I see that the highlights are very bright up there. Da Vinci, I'm gonna close this up just so have more space. DaVinci actually has this highlight where it brings just the highlights down. 
which I really like. And then if you want to adjust the contrast, bring in more contrast, add some more saturation like that. I see that this is blown out a little bit. I'm gonna bring the highlights down just a tad bit more. And let's say I want to make his face brighter, um, but keep the darks here. I would bring up the midtones and bring down the darks or the blacks. And I'd keep doing that, going back and forth, bringing the midtones up and bringing the, the blacks down until I get the look that I want. And let's say this is still bright, the, the gain is still bright out there. What I'll do is just bring the gain down like that. And that's it. That's basically all you need for the coloring. And once you're done with coloring, you can just come over here to delivery, right here, set the name, basics where do you want to export it to usually desktop and if you guys want you can save these settings um, and just copy these these are the best export settings currently for davinci for the video part and for audio these are the settings that you want to choose if you guys want to create your own presets, then what you can do is just come up here and save as new preset, and then call it whatever it is that you want. But once you got all this down, what you want to do is select your in and out point. What do you want to export? So for example, if I want to export the beginning to the end here, I'm gonna press I, I'm gonna press O. Once that's set, you just come down here, add to render queue. It's gonna move it up here. So what render queue does is you can stack a bunch of videos that you want to edit. So this first one, this first one is from beginning to end here, but say I want to make another video and export just this middle part, I would put in an out point using I and O here. And then I would be able to add this to the render queue. So now I have one and two. The first video would export the entire video and the second one would export just this middle part. You highlight them both and now you can just render them and it'll render that out for you. So that basically sums up DaVinci Resolve. Remember guys, let's get this video to a thousand likes and I'll drop my keyboard shortcuts video. So with that, I'll see you guys on the next one.